So in this video I will explain how we calculate probabilities or the probability distribution, the probability mass function and the cumulative uh, distribution function for a binomial random variable. So to understand what a binomial random variable is, it's easiest to think about a coin toss example, but that is just sort of the easiest way to think about it. Think about having a coin and when you toss it, once you either get heads or you get tails. That by itself is what the outcome of this coin toss is what we call a Bernoulli random variable. Okay, so one coin toss produces outcomes that follow a Bernoulli random variable or a random distribution. However, if you have several coin tosses, n coin tosses, and therefore you have n independent, and we have to assume that, that the outcome of the independent we have to assume that the outcome of the second coin toss is independent of the outcome of the first coin toss. So n coin tosses, so n independent Bernoulli experiments then we can think about a binomial random variable and let's, so we haven't defined the random variable yet Let's say, let me use a different color for this, let me use green. So x is the number of heads in n coin tosses. Okay, then that random variable n is what we call a Bernoulli random variable and that is based on the number of successes in n Bernoulli experiments. So let's think about a practical example. Let's think about n being equal to 3. So x is the number of heads in three coin tosses. So what is the sample space? For x, well, it is 0, 1, 2, or 3. We can really only have one of these four outcomes. That means what we now want to establish is what is the probability that x is equal to 0, what is the probability that x is equal to 1, or equal to 2, or equal to 3. These are all little piece, so there are probabilities for this particular outcome. So what possible sequence of coin toss results can we have? So I might do this fairly random, but I will have to figure out that we get all of them. So let's say we are our sequence of coin toss results is tail, tail, tail. Okay, in our three coin tosses, we get three tails. That will deliver zero heads, so an outcome of x equals zero. What about um, which possible outcome would produce one head? For instance, head, tail, tail. That is an outcome, a sequence of outcomes for the Bernoulli experiment that would deliver one head equally, tail, head, tail would equally deliver one and there is a third possible outcome that would be tail, tail, head that would also deliver one head and two tails. So it would deliver an outcome of x equals 1. And perhaps you can see the structure here. 
a sequence of tail tail oh sorry tail head head would deliver two heads so x equals two equally a sequence of head tail head would deliver x equals two and a sequence of head head tail would deliver x equals two and lastly there's only one sequence of coin toss results that would deliver x equals to three that means three heads and that is if all three coin tosses result in heads okay all we've done so far is we've just listed the possible sequences of the three coin tosses and what possible outcome they could have so we haven't calculated any probabilities yet from here we have to think about what is the probability that if we throw the coin three times that each time we get tails now what is the probability let me write that in blue so what's the probability of success so the probability that a coin toss produces uh, heads we call that the probability of success in our case is 0 0.5 and the probability that we get a tail would be 1 minus pi or also 0 0.5 so the probability get tail 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 if these are independent coin tosses would be 1 minus pi 1 minus pi times 1 minus pi times 1 minus pi or 1 minus pi to the power of 3 and that is 1 over 8 a half times a half times a half so let's continue next Let me switch to green again for this probability here probability that x is equal to 3 well it would be pi times pi times pi or pi to the power of 3 and that is also 1 over 8 because pi is a half so a half to the power of 3 is 1 over 8 what about these here each of these outcomes what about that first outcome here the probability is a half times a half times a half because the probability for each of these outcomes is a half if you have a fair coin so it's 1 over 8 and then we also have the probability for this outcome so we can add the probabilities for these outcomes okay because they're mutually exclusive so it's 1 over 8 plus 1 over 8 plus 1 over 8 that is 3 over 8 and you get the same result here so here is our probability mass function let me just uh, draw a little graph here that's not what I wanted draw a little graph here we have our PMF or little p of x and here we have our outcomes and we have as possibilities 0 1 2 and 3 and we know the probability mass is 1 8 3 8 3 8 1 8 that's our probability mass function So what you see here, this year is really three times, that will be important later, three times one over eight. And why is it three times one over eight? Because we're having three ways, one, two, three, in which we can get one head and two tails. And the same here. This is also three times one over eight because there are three ways in which we can get two heads three times sorry three times one over half 
No, 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 sorry. Okay, it was correct. Three times one over eight. Uh, I got that muddled up. Let me just clear that. So each individual sequence has a probability of one over eight and there are three of them. So it's three times one over eight. So now what we also want to figure out is what is the CDF? So what is the probability big P that X is smaller or equal to zero, the probability that X is smaller or equal to one, the probability that X is smaller or equal to two, and the probability that X is smaller or equal to three. Now, this probability here, probability that X is smaller or equal to zero, the only outcome that hits this mark is this here, that x is equal to zero. That's the only outcome that fits this bill. So that is just the same, that is gonna be one over eight. What about the probability that x is smaller or equal to one? Well, that could be this outcome or this outcome. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add this value and this value, which gives us four over eight or a half. What about the probability that x is smaller or equal to 2? That is this possibility, this possibility and this possibility. So we are adding 1 over 8, 3 over 8 and 3 over 8. That is altogether 7 over 8. And what about the probability that x is smaller or equal to 3? Well, that could be any of the possible outcomes. And if it could be any of the possible outcomes, then our cumulative probability is that it's just one. So let us sketch the CDF. Um, X here having the big P of X. So that is the CDF. And we're having our values zero, one, two, and three. CDFs, and now let me draw that in a different color so it becomes obvious, I'll draw it in black. CDFs always start at zero and they always end up at one, somewhere. Okay, and the question is what happens in between? So we know X at a value of three, that function will be one. At a value of zero, the function will be, the CDF will be one eighth. So here we have one eighth. So the function goes, jumps up from zero to one eighth. Then at one, it goes to a half. So it stays at one eighth. And at one, it goes to half. That's about here. So it goes up here. At two, it goes to seven eighth. So seven eighth is about here. So it stays at one half until we get to two, it goes to here, and then it goes all the way to three, where it jumps up to one. That is the CDF of this binomial function, which has the two important parameters, number of Bernoulli experiments, in our case, Toyn courses, and the second important parameter here was that success probability. Pi is equal to 0.5. These distributions will change their shape depending on n and depending on pi. But n and pi is everything you need to know about that distribution.